So Daredevil Born Again is set to be released in 2024 on Disney+. And we are already starting to see cast and crew trying to drum up interest and hype in this show that may or may not be a direct continuation of the Netflix series. Also, we have show websites like IGN out in full force trying to convince people that this show is going to be worth watching. However, everyone seems to be forgetting one major detail. That being, Marvel Studios may have already done so much damage to these characters that by the time Daredevil Born Again is released, there's a good possibility that absolutely no one will care about it. Let's discuss. Our, our content sucks. Our, our content sucks. I watch so you don't have to. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. So with Marvel Studios dipping their toes into the quote-unquote more mature content with Echo, it's now time to look ahead to Daredevil Born Again and see if there's any chance that a studio known for their juvenile, formulaic storytelling can capture even a fraction of the energy that the original Netflix Daredevil series did. So you're telling me there's a chance. I want to start this off by saying I wasn't personally into the Netflix Marvel shows as much as everyone else was. But just so you know that I'm not a bad guy, I do understand why a lot of people enjoyed them. And even if they weren't my cup of tea, I can at least admit to you that it was infinitely better than anything that's been released on Disney+. Plus. I'm sorry if you are one of those people who thought that WandaVision was high art, but I'm here to inform you that, in fact, it was not. You're really talking about just raising your standards. I spoke about this in my Echo Episode 1 review, but I'll say it again here. I strongly believe that the only reason Marvel Studios is now embracing the more mature content, and even making the Netflix shows officially canon in the MCU, is because they are lost creatively and desperately trying to latch on to anything that worked in the past. Even if they had nothing to do with that thing's original creative process. This is being portrayed by many as a move to please hardcore fans. When in fact the real reason they are doing this is the same reason they always do things like this and it's out of pure laziness. This is the type of thing that we expect from a creatively bankrupt company like Disney Marvel. You're pathetically predictable. Up until this point, they've used the Netflix characters sparingly in the MCU. And I would argue that the small amount of time we have seen these characters in the MCU, Marvel Studios has already somehow found a way to ruin the perception of them. Even though this obviously isn't the first time we're seeing Daredevil and Kingpin on our screens, it is the first time that we're seeing them in this universe, and first impressions are everything. But more on that in a moment. So Vincent D'Onofrio, the face of Kingpin, spoke recently about the reason for what was described as a creative overhaul partway through the production of Daredevil Born Again. He says it's because Marvel came to the decision and decided not to play it ambiguous anymore, and they wanted to go all in on the continuity with the Netflix series. So the question is, why the sudden change of heart? Because up until that point, Daredevil Born Again was being treated more like a reboot than a continuation. Well, the answer is simple, really. After an abysmal 2023, both creatively and financially, Marvel Studios quickly realized that their new direction for the Daredevil character wasn't going to work. Once again, this is a great example of a major Hollywood studio being reactive instead of proactive. They didn't have the foresight to see that audiences were not interested in a watered-down version of Daredevil. Don't waste my motherfucking time! I mean, outside of his cameo appearance in No Way Home, his first real appearance in the MCU was on a awful She-Hulk show, where he was basically randomly dropped into a romantic comedy and made to look like a fool. At this moment, Marvel clearly wasn't concerned with continuity and being consistent with the Netflix Daredevil series. They treated Daredevil like just another joke in their long line of terrible jokes. So when that noticeably didn't work, and they wasted a lot of money on She-Hulk, and proceeded to suffer major financial losses after a series of terrible projects, only then did they decide to keep continuity with Daredevil Born Again. But the reality of the situation is that the damage has already been done. Don't bother. 
And this goes back to what I said about how you only get one first impression when it comes to introducing characters into an established universe. Competent writers and creatives would know that they need to introduce these characters in a more satisfying way. Perhaps in a way that appeals to both fans of the Netflix series and fans of the MCU. But we all know that modern Hollywood in general is terrible at keeping previously established characters consistent. They would much rather tear those characters down and rebuild them in their own uncreative image. Which brings me to the other major character who is crossing over from the Netflix series, that being Kingpin. I found an article today on the Garbage Gear website that is IGN. And the headline reads, Forget Kang, Kingpin is the major villain the MCU needs right now. Now, under normal circumstances, if this character hadn't already appeared in the MCU, I might agree with this. Unfortunately, he has already appeared, and much like Kang before him, Marvel Studios has done absolutely nothing to build him up as a credible threat moving forward, worthy of every superhero in the MCU being worried about him. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. The last time we've seen Kingpin was in the finale of the Echo series, where Echo essentially uses her powers to free Wilson Fisk from the pent-up rage and hatred that dominate his life. And the once formidable Kingpin is so taken back by this that he cries and retreats. Stop being a b to come on! And he now has a criminal organization that is in shambles because of the attacks of Maya. The show does hint that he may be looking for a more legitimate form of power by possibly running for New York City Mayor. But here's a question, if a D-level character in the MCU can defeat Kingpin in this manner and turn him into a shell of his former self, how exactly is anyone supposed to take him seriously as a possible overarching villain for the MCU moving forward? Publications like IGN tend to react to things and think about things in a way that a mindless bot on social media would. The type of people that wouldn't know a good story or good characterization if it punched them in the face. They did the same exact thing with Kang the Conqueror. They built him up in the media, told everyone he was going to be a force. A lot of people believed it, but they didn't actually do anything on screen to justify it. And the next thing we know, he's being dispatched by Ant-Man and a pack of giant ants. This is it. I have to beat him. Bottom line, the issue has been and will always be that the MCU isn't as planned out and well thought out as some people think it is. The creative just isn't there. They have mostly incompetent writers and producers trying to make everything fit into this established universe and failing miserably. There's no real consistency. There's no building for the future. They seemingly change plans daily, sometimes right in the middle of production like Daredevil Born Again. And no one will ever be able to tell me that that's the most effective and efficient way to tell stories. This whole thing only works if you have a well thought out vision and you stick to it. That's exactly what these Netflix shows did with these characters. And that's probably a big reason why a lot of people enjoy those shows to this day. That makes sense. The truth is, is that making great television or great films isn't as hard as some of these studios make it out to be. What it really comes down to is putting the right people in the right situations and getting out of their way. Somewhere along the way, Marvel Studios lost sight of that, and now they're scrambling for answers. When it comes right down to it, I have very little faith that Daredevil Born Again will be any good, and I have very little faith that it will be consistent with the Netflix show as advertised, because Marvel Studios doesn't even understand what people liked about that show to begin with. The damage has already been done, and I would be shocked if Marvel Studios was able to do anything to reignite interest in these characters or this brand. Y'all be cool. Nah, nah. 